On behalf of the President of the United States, the United States Army, and a grateful nation, please accept this flag as a symbol of appreciation for your loved one's honorable and faithful service. collecting the brass that was fired at today's service. And we'll be placing that in a box for you to receive for the family at the very end. While they're doing that, which may take them a few moments, if one of the uh, family members who's prepared to speak would like to step up and maybe share some thoughts at this moment, they're welcome to do so. And then when they have all the brass gathered, we'll pause for a moment so they can give that to you as well. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you all for showing up to honor my dad and to support us, his family. He had a good run, 96 years. And up until COVID, he was held up for leather, as Louis Lamore would say, his favorite author. He was so fortunate to have an amazing retirement because from the time he was a very young boy, 
He always worked supporting his family and then his own family of seven kids, one wife, several dogs, and a couple of horses. He really had an opportunity to live his life to the fullest. He always had something to look forward to. He kept himself busy with things that were interesting and fun to him, NASCAR, motorcycle racing. He traveled the country enjoying both of those endeavors. The last several years have been a battle against cancer, aging, and loneliness. The worst of it was, I'm sorry, he was fiercely independent. He didn't want to lean on anybody. It was a struggle for him emotionally, physically, and medically. But as always, he pushed forward. The worst of it was the isolation, loneliness, and inactivity. I think that happens to a lot of our old people. If I've learned nothing else from the last five years of being my dad's medical advocate, is that face-to-face -face time is the best medicine for everyone. And remember, if we're lucky, we'll be an old person. Some of us are getting closer. <laughs> and possibly alone. So like the good book says, do unto others as you would have done to you. Dad wasn't an overly spiritual or religious type of person, but I had a conversation with him, and he I believe he had a personal relationship with Jesus, which gave my heart comfort because Mom has been waiting for him for a long time. I helped him stay home as long as he could, and I thank God that he did end up relenting and going to the Richard Owens Hospice Center where they took such wonderful care of him. The last thing Dad said to me was that the girls are giving me fantastic care, I am comfortable, and I feel safe. And that was all we ever wanted for him. We did it, Dad. I'd like to read this poem by Walt Whitman. It was written about the death of Abraham Lincoln, and metaphorically, it reminds me of my dad. O oh, Captain, my Captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack. The prize we sought is won. The port is near, the bells I hear, the people all exulting, while follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But oh heart, 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 oh the bleeding drops of red, where on the deck my captain lies, fallen cold and dead. Oh captain, my captain, rise up and hear the bells, rise up, for the flag is flung, for you the bugle trills, for you bouquets and ribbon wreaths, for you shores a crowding. For you they call, the swaying mass, their eager faces turning. Here, Captain, dear father, this arm beneath your head. It is some dream that on the deck you have fallen, cold and dead. My captain does not answer. His lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my arm. He has no pulse nor will. The ship is anchored safe and sound. Its voyage closed and done. From fearful trip the victor ship comes in with object one. Exult, O shores, and ring, O bells. But I, with mournful tread, walk the dead. My captain lies, fallen, old, and dead. He was our captain. That's a herald. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I have. Thank sis, you, sis. Chris.